So I hope everybody knows you got a bit idea about syllabus, right? So where does geography come for you in, in your syllabus? For your mains examination, under which paper comes geography? Anybody? GS? GS1, right? And for your prelims? Paper 1 or paper 2? Paper 1, right? Fine. So the today, why this session? Like, we won't be discussing any particular topic. Rather, you know, I'll be you know, I'll be taking orientation session today. So the aim of this session means like I'll be discussing three things. One, why you should study geography. Okay, and then uh, what you need to study in geography and how we can you know, tackle the future questions. So three parts. First thing, why? I hope you all know why you should study geography, right? Tell me the importance first of all. Yeah, as simple as that, right? It's already there in syllabus. And another thing is like, uh, it's there for both your prelims as well as your mains examination, right? But you, you won't get many subjects like that. So then, from geography, you can expect questions both for your prelims as well as your main subject. So while studying prelims itself or for your topic itself, you study it from the mains perspective also. Fine. The next thing, like how many questions will you get from studying geography? Still smiling, right? How many questions will you get from uh, geography for your prelims examination? And you, you, you are already having like the compiled versions of questions for both, from both your prelims as well as your mains examination. Now, if you compare or if you consider all the questions from the previous years for your prelims examination, you'll get on, on an average, like you'll get at least 12 questions. Just take the last page. The last page we are having page number 15. We are having topic wise analysis there. So, like, see the uh, recent year trend. Last year, 10 questions. Before that, 13. Before that, 12, 14, 14, 11. So, on an average, you will get at least 12 questions for your prelims examination, right? See, what, is, what was the cutoff this year? Yeah, you have already heard this, right, in a First hour in this session, session. What was the cutoff for your prelims exam this year? 116. So 12 questions means you'll get at least 24 marks out of 116. So if cutoff is 116, you, you, you'll get 24 marks from geography. And if you consider the main questions, again, take the first page of the compilation. In the year 2016, how many questions? Six. In year 15, 7, 14, 10. Now, is there any difference in marks for the 2014 questions? Each question carries 10 marks. So that's why the number of questions are higher that year, right? In 2013, again, 7 questions. So on an average, you'll get 6 to 7 questions from geography for your mains examination. And each question will carry 12.5 marks. Now, as per the current pattern. So what is the total marks for GS1? Total marks for GS1? 250. So out of 250, my contribution will be out of 250. So again, by also like this geography, it is having a link with other part of the syllabus also in uh, GS3. Now, GS3, we are having a syllabus related with disaster management. So if you see the, just read the syllabus, the first three points, or read the last third point first. Important geophysical phenomena such as earthquake, cyclones, tsunami. So these things we'll be studying again, like how, these are disasters, right? How, how, we, how can we manage these disasters? That will be dealt while de taking GS3 or disaster management, fine. So on an average, like you will get seven questions from geography for your mains examination. But the total, marks for written exam means 1750. So comparing or considering disaster management and the GS1, you'll get on an average like uh, uh, somewhere around 90 to 100 marks will come from geography and related topics, considering environment as well as disaster management. Fine. So this is why you should study geography. So we'll be having on an average 
total marks you'll get from pre for your prelims examination and for your mains, you'll get an on, an on an average, you'll get 90 to 100 marks. Fine. <coughs> Next. What all things? Again, take the questions page. First, we'll discuss mains, then we'll go to prelims, right? Now, uh, read the 2016 first question. Discuss the concept of air mass and explain its role in macroclimatic changes. Now, this concept of air mass, it's there in the uh, NCIT itself and it's there in under the climatology. So, while discussing climatology, we'll deal with air mass, right? And it, they have already asked a question for your 2016 examination. Now, this particular question is from the conventional geography itself. They are not related with uh, current affair or anything. They are related with the conventional geography, right? If you look at 2015, again, uh, the second question or the first question. Read the first question. Explain the factors responsible for the formation, origin of ocean currents. How do they influence regional climate, fishing and navigation? Again, for the, for the first time, they are asking a question from ocean currents in that year. Right. Again, similar like in 2013 as well as in 2014, we can see like the topics which you are studying for your prelims exam or prelims topping that they will be asking questions from the conventional geography itself. And another thing, for the mains examinations, the questions can be from current affair also. For example, uh, the 2016 second question, Himalayas are highly prone to landslide, discuss the causes and suggest suitable measures of mitigation. I already told you that it's a current affair, right? Can you name the issue? In that year, we had this CH, uh, landslide in Siachen Glacier and like one soldier was trapped under the glacier. And that's why this question came. Fine. This is another favorite area of UPSC also. Another question. The same year, the fourth question. Major cities of India are becoming more vulnerable to flood conditions. Discuss. Again, in that year, we had recurrent floods. Chennai flood as well as Uttarakhand and in northern part also we, are, we were having like more than one uh, flood fire in that year. And then now if you see the GS3 paper under disaster management also we are having questions from flood. So again that, that area is there in the current affair and they, they asked a question for your GS1 also. Now another funny part is like the 2016 second question, read that last part, suggest the suitable me measures of mitigation. See landslide is a disaster right? How can we mitigate it? Actually, this is under the D DM part or GS3, but they are asking question for your GS1 also. So the topics are interlinked, right? Now similarly, like in 2015, you can see fourth question, 2015, fourth question. Mumbai, Delhi, Kolkata, three mega cities of the country, but air pollution is much more serious problem in Delhi as compared to the other two. Why is this so? Again, if, if you have been following news, you'll understand that the air pollution in metropolitan cities, especially in the case of Delhi, it, it is always there in the news. Especially in winter season, it will be there in news. And like we'll be studying like a particular matter and the air quality index, everything under this or in context of this air pollution in our metropolitan cities. So again, that topic was in current affair, especially in that year. And they asked a question related with that for your mains examination. So the overall trend is you will be getting two kinds of questions either strictly related with the conventional syllabus or related with current affair. Or there is a third type of question also. Fine. If you see that landslide question, they are not directly asking the current issue. Rather than they are linking that current issue with the syllabus. Right? They are not asking about like uh, how many days the soldier was trapped under the landslide or avalanches. Did they ask any such question? No, right? So they are interlinking the current issue related with the or interlinking it into the syllabus, right? So you can expect three kinds of questions, conventional questions, then current affairs, then you can interlink the current affair as well as conventional type of questions. So while, no, why I'm saying this right now in the first class itself? Because you will be reading a lot of articles related with geography. Uh, in this year also, you will be reading articles related with cyclone or like flood or drought or like maybe related with uh, uh, other issues like water resource or anything or you'll be reading articles related with monsoon and everything. So you should keep an idea that you can expect a question related with that particular concern for your mains examination. 
fine. So another thing like uh, any issue like say refugee crisis or anything, any international politics or any issues like while studying itself, always keep an no, keep an eye open for your for the geographical aspect of that issue. Did you get me? Like when you're reading a particular issue, it'll always be having a geographical aspect. Either the the region will be landlocked or it'll be connected in a particular manner. Always keep a, keep your eye open to that such issues so that you can bring those perspectives into your main answers, right? <coughs> now, next thing, UPC is having like certain favorite areas where questions will be repeated. Questions as such, they don't repeat, rather the areas repeat. For example, you already saw the previous question from landslide, right? The year 2016. Now take the year uh, 2013. See the fourth question, A part. 2013, fourth question, A part. Bring out the causes for the more frequent occurrence of landslides in Himalayas than in Western Ghat. If you want, you can again read the 2016 question. The area is same, right? If a particular person preparing for the 2016 exam, which if, he, if, they, if they have seen the 2013 previous question and prepared that area, they would have surely answered this 2016 question properly, right? So this landslide, especially in the case of like Western Ghat as well as in the case of like Himalayas, it's a favorite area of UPSC, fine. Similarly, like in 2013, first question, second part. The recent cyclone on east coast of India was called Phylin. Which was the most recent cyclone which affected the Chennai coast? Any idea? What the cyclone, right? So you can expect such questions related with the frequent uh, or related with the recent cyclone incidences, right? So this particular question is related with the, you know, the naming of a cyclone, right? In 2000, Now, again, in the 2000 year, 2014, uh, fourth question again. Tropical cyclones are largely confined to the given three regions, right? And they are being asked, why? So that question is discussing about, see, why the tropical cyclones are distributed in a particular manner or any, any weather event? It will be having certain kind of factors which is necessary for the formation, right? Now, in, take 2015 prelims question and see the first question. 2015 prelims, first question. In South Atlantic and Southeastern Pacific Oceans, cyclones does not originate. What was the question in 2014 again? Why the cyclones were confined to selected regions? So in 2015, for your prelims, they asked why cyclone is not originating over the other two regions. So the area is similar. If you have seen the this previous year mains question and prepared that region or the distribution of tropical cyclone, you'd be able to answer the prelims question in 2015. So again, tropical cyclones is under the favorite area of UPC. So we can find this kind of like favorite areas both for your mains as well as for your prelims examination. And we'll be discussing these favorite areas in our classes. I just showed you some example, right? Now this is all about the uh, your preparation for mains examination. Now let's take a look at the prelims. Fine. So an, on an average, like you will get 12 questions from geography for your prelims exam, right? Now among these 12 questions, again we can divide the questions as current affair as well as conventional. Now regarding, have you heard about the Paris Agreement? Regarding which area? Climate change, right? So climate change is a really hot topic from the perspective of a prelims examination. And in the year 2016, they have asked six questions from current affair related with climate change. See, six, six questions, or, or among the 100 questions, six of them came from climate change, from single topic. So just think about the importance of that particular topic. So you can have such kind of current affair questions as well as like conventional questions. Just the 2016 first question. The term intended nationally determined contributions is sometimes seen in the news in the context of. Don't read the options. See, I already told you that we, we are having uh, current affair questions from climate change, right? With that knowledge, see if you can answer the question. Just go through the options.
intended nationally determined contribution is sometimes seen in the context of which will be the answer it's related with climate change and the answer will be b right so the question is not tough if a person who have just seen this area in article the articles regarding indc they started to appear in news right from like 2015 as well as in 2016 so if we take the entire articles it will be there will be like 150 or 200 articles from this indc topic so a serious aspirant would have seen this topic and the question is simple no? likewise <coughs> so this is one question related with climate change that came for your prelims examination in 2016 likewise uh, third question fourth question everything is related with climate change now read the fourth question which of the following best describe or describe the aim of green india mission of government of india and the first question and this fourth question they are different right first question is there any options like the we are having only four options right or four choices one among them is the answer but in this question there are three statements and we are given like choices or quotes are ha have been given there right here the answer will be any guess just tell me first statement second statement or third statement which is the probable true statement regarding green india mission i already told you it's related with climate change we'll simply get the answer right the third one will be the answer or the th three only is the answer now go through the options select the correct answer using the code given below one only Two and three only, three only, and one, two, three. Now, if you know the first statement is wrong, you can eliminate the first statement from the options. And we'll discuss this later. Like, what are the uh, types of questions that are being asked from geography? Okay. So, what I mean to say here is like the the statement type of questions that are easy to answer when comparing with A B C type of questions. You can do some tricks. You can you can eliminate the statements, and you'll get into the answer without knowing the all the statements, right? Fine. <coughs> So already we saw like A B C D type of question. Okay. Another thing is like some some kind of favorite areas from for your prelims examination. One area we already discussed. Which one? Climate cyclones, right? So we are already having previous question both for your mains as well as for your prelims examination. So you, in this year, like you can again expect a question from cyclones. Fine. So similarly, like landslide, since they have asked that question for your mains examination, you can expect that for your prelims exam. Likewise, there are again certain kind of favorite areas. Like one is this climate change, and another thing like uh, uh, westernized. Westernized, they are a type of wind. Okay, and in the year 2015, as well as in the year 2011, like we are having questions from westernized. Take uh, the 2011 page and <coughs> the second question. Western is in southern hemisphere are stronger and persistent than in the northern hemisphere. Why? So I am not discussing answers right now. Just I wanted to show you some areas from in which like you should expect questions from these areas. Like now take the page number five, two thousand fifteen, sixth question. Page number five, two thousand fifteen, sixth question. From the same area, right? So. Why this 2011 year is important for us? We are not having questions beyond that year from in this segregation. The pattern changed, right? Or syllabus changed? Fine. So 2011, they have asked a question for you from Westerlies, and 2015 also there is a question. So again, what do you understand from that? Westerlies, it's a favorite area of UPC. Fine. <coughs> <coughs> so now let's take a look at the. statement type of questions the statement type of questions see all the we saw like a b c d type of question right you will be given four options and only one will be the answer and regarding a b c d questions you should always read the entire options see sometimes what happens is that you will be reading the question and the first option will seem like answer so don't read the or don't mark the statement or the don't mark in your answer sheet only by reading the first statement because like when you come to the fourth statement you will be having 
both A or C or both A and B. And there are, there's a chance for, for such an option to be there in the for statement, right? So make sure or mandatorily always read all the four options among the ABC type of question, right? Now, regarding the statement type of questions, you can expect statement type like two statement or three or four or even up to six. So first of all, like if you're seeing a five statement or six statement question, normally like we'll be seeing it as a difficult question, right? There are more statements are have been given there, right? But it is the easiest to answer. You'll be needing to know only maybe two statements or three statements among the six in order to get into the answer. So that's the easiest question, right? Two statement question. Just uh, <coughs> 2016, eighth question. 2016, for your prelims, okay. For your prelims, 2016, eighth question. Page number four. Consider the following statements, and two statements are being given there. Now, go through the options. One only, two only, both one and two, neither one nor two. Now, just listen, like, International Solar Alliance is being asked there, right? Have you heard about the International Solar Alliance? No. See, what does that term mean, International Solar? Solar means something related with solar or sun or solar energy, renewable energy, such things, right? Alliance. Coalition, right? So just think about it. Do like a, all the countries in throughout the world does they have like solar energy? I mean, the polar nations like they are not having uh, solar energy throughout the year, right? So they won't be able to generate solar energy, right? So will there be in this coalition? Will there be all the nations in UN? Will they be will they be member in this or coalition? Yes or no? No, right? Now read the statement. See, the first statement is true. Like We'll discuss what is UNFCC and uh, when they launched and everything and all, right? Read the second statement. Second statement is wrong, right? But can you eliminate any options? Anyway, like you will be needing to know both the statements, then only you will, be ge uh, you will get into the answer, right? So two statement questions, among the statement type of question, they are the most difficult. You need to know both the statements, then only you will be able to get to the answer. Fine. So if you're taking... See, if you're guessing at some answers, don't guess at two statement questions. So in a way, like, you can reduce your negative marks. Right? How much negative marks does each question carry? If you're making one question wrong, how many marks will be deducted? One by third or two by third? One by third. So in effect, you will lose 0 0.66, right? So always reduce the uh, wrong... Uh, Reduce the, the wrong marks and don't take risk in the two statement questions. Fine. <coughs> now the third statement. Again, 2016, fourth question. We have already dealed, uh, dealt with the third statement, right? And the three, see the options. So suppose if you know the first statement is wrong, you can eliminate eliminate A and D. So from that, you'll understand that third statement is true. So you, you, now you don't need to uh, worry about the thir third statement at all, right? Third statement is already true. True. The, are you getting me? So the, now it all depends on whether second statement is true or what. So if second, second statement is true, the answer will be B. If the second statement is wrong, the answer will be C. Understood. So in effect, among the three statements, you'll be able to get into the answer without knowing one statement. Understood. <coughs> now you're having like a lot of three statement questions. 2013, ninth question. See the options. They're a bit different from the previous options, right? But anyway, like you'll be able to apply the elimination method in, even in this question also. Similarly, see, in, see the sixth question in the same year, 2013, sixth question. During the thunderstorm, a thunder in the sky is produced by you. You are given three statements. Select the correct answer, right? 
So these are the some kind of three statement questions which are having different kind of options that UPC frequently asks. Okay. Similarly, 2012 seventh question. 2012 seventh question. Consider the following factors. Four factors are being given there. So now this type of particular question, it's like again we can consider it as four statement questions. And see the options. One and two only. One, two, three. One and four. Two, three, and four. So, saying like the fourth option or fourth statement is wrong. So the answer will. <coughs> can you guess at the answer? Fourth statement is wrong. So you can eliminate D and C. So the answer will obviously like the one and two. It's already correct. Fine. So it all depends on whether you know the third statement. So among the four statements you will be able to get into the answer without knowing two statements. So this is why I already told you that the, as the number of the statements increase, it will be more easier for you to answer. Fine. So don't take risk at the two statement questions. And if you're seeing three statements, four statements, or six or five, make sure you answer such questions. For, because the probability, if you're, even, if, even if you're guessing at it, the probability will be more to make that particular question correct. Right? <coughs> Anyway, don't take any blind guesses. If you don't have the four statements, all the four statements, don't guess it. <coughs> then, uh, 2014, 10th question. Consider the following pairs. And on one side, particular quantities being given there. On the other side, like something related with production or anything is given. The, in effect, this pair type of question, they are not actually match the following. So in years like beyond like 2011 and all, they used to ask, like match the type of, uh, match the following type of questions. Even if like, if you look at CDS or NDA, like still we are having this kind of match the following type of question. But this is the kind of different. Again, it can be seen as bit uh, three statement or four statement question itself. Again, look at the options. What are the options? And again, apply the same logic as we've done in the case of four statement questions. You can eliminate certain kind of pairs and you'll be able to get, you'll get in the answer like by eliminating the pairs. So here in this pair type of question, you can expect certain kind of pair type of questions. For example, imagine if you're studying a uh, certain type of clouds. Okay. And each cloud will be having different properties. So on one side, type of the clouds will be given. And on the other side, different features will be given. And you will be asked to find which of them is correctly paired. They are not asking you to match the entire pairs. Rather, they are asking you which of them is correctly paired. Understood? <coughs> and even, the, even in the year 2016, we are having this pair type of question. 2016 prelims, third question. Read the left side. Annex one countries certified emission reduction, or like like clean development mechanism. See these three things. They are related with climate change, and they are related with Kyoto Protocol. Can you answer the question? So three pairs are being given there, right? So the first pair, it's not Cartagena prot Protocol, right? So you can eliminate the one. So you can eliminate D as well as A, right? Now again, if you know the uh, second statement or second pair, it's wrong. You can again eliminate B and you will get into the answer, right? Similarly, like what we done in the case of statement type of question, the so same logic can be applied to the pair type of question also. <coughs> now take the page number 14. Last question, page number, page number 14, or 2011, last question. Is there any, is it like normal ABCD question? Just go through the question. Read the question. What has been given there? What is, sorry, what has been asked there? Not correct, right? So you will be having how many correct and correct options will be the, given there in the options? Three of them will be correct, right? And one will be wrong. Now you are being asked to find out the not correct. 
So always make sure you see this note. So suppose while reading the question or you know, all the stress and tension and if you miss this note, you'll make this or you'll mark this question wrongly, right? You're not losing, in that case you're not losing 0.66, rather you're losing 2.66. Why? You knew that question, right? You knew that area. But if you are making a careless mistake, you're not losing actually 0 0.66 rather than you are you know, losing 2.66. You're losing that, you know, the correct marks for that question, right? So make sure like you don't make any careless kind of mistakes. So this not statement type of question results in the careless mistakes. So if you, are, if you ask your seniors or veterans, like they will say like, uh, always when you're solving the previous questions or like writing test series, make sure like you got a strategy correct for your for tackling this kind of not statement questions. So whenever you are reading any type of question, first just check whether it is having not or not. For the prelims examination, if there is a note, they will bold it. They will bold it. See, even after bolding in, many students don't see the note statement. So while solving the questions, make sure you always read, check whether you are having this note statement or not. Fine. <coughs> So these are the questions that come from the uh, from the conventional syllabus as well as from the current affair for your prelims examinations. Now, how we, how will we find out like how important each topic is? Take the last page or page number fifteen. Like see that topic-wise analysis. <coughs> the entire topics they are divided into two. World geography. See, this is a R classification, right? This is like as such, like how I want wanted it to be classified. This is as such, fine. So, <coughs> it is divided into world geography and Indian geography. And again, there are two more subdivisions, right? Physical and political. Now, this the majority of the questions they actually come from the physical geography part, and so that's why I give, uh, I gave it a separate classification. Now, go through the uh, first physical classification, like first one, Earth and Universe, right? Second, Geomorphology. Then third, Climatology. Fourth, Oceanography. Which among them is the most important? Climatology. Why? We are having, in all the previous years, like we are having more questions coming from Climatology. Even for your mains examination also, like we are having frequent questions from Climatology. For example, the Tropical Cyclones. Or El Nino. El Nino is another favorite area of UPSC. For both for your prelims as well as for your mains examination, they already have they already ask questions from El Nino. Even in this year also, El Nino is in news, so you can expect question for your prelims as well as for this year's mains, right? <coughs> <coughs> now, under climatology comes climate change and uh, the ozone depletion. See, there are other topics, other general topics, and even in that, like we are having certain kind of uh, favorite areas. Why I separately gave climate change and ozone depletion, they separately like have that kind of importance. Whenever we are having any kind of recent developments in the issues related with climate change or the ozone depletion, they always ask question for your prelims exam. Now see the questions from climate change in all the years starting from 2011 to 16. In the previous year, there are six questions, right? In 2015, three questions. 14, 1, 15, 13, no question, 12, 1, 11, 1. See, what happened is that after 2000 or starting from 2015, new climate change or new climate pact agreement started to evolve. This pact agreement started from 2015 or the negotiations or the discussions started from 2015. So it started to appear in news. Frequently the issue climate change was in news. Now take the 2015 uh, prelims questions. <coughs> See the question 2011, sorry, questions 11, 12, and 13 from the year 2015. Question number 11, 12, and 13, page number 6. All the three questions, they are related with climate change. All the three questions, they are related with climate change. And another thing is, they are related with the funding mechanism of climate change. Green Climate Fund and the other th uh, biocarbon fund and the other thing also, they are related with 
how we can fund or take initiative for climate change or it's related with the funding mechanisms of climate change. And in the year 2016, they asked about the organizations, the Paris Agreement, International Solar Alliance, Kyoto Protocol, everything they are organizations or agreements related with climate change. Fine. So in the recent years, this issue climate change has acquired more importance. Similarly, like you can say this in the case of ozone depletion. Okay. The agreement or protocol related with the ozone depletion is Montreal Protocol. And they, are, they have been asking questions from Mondia, Montreal Protocol. And in, even in this year, like the Montreal Protocol, we are, we are having an amendment in this protocol. So again, you can expect questions for your prelims as well as for the mains examination. Clear? So while reading, reading newspapers, will frequently come across the articles related with the climate change or related with the ozone depletion. Is that important for your preparation? Yes or no? Yes. <coughs> now, another area is like see the Indian geography part and see how many questions that have been asked from the rivers. Take page number 15. <coughs> The year 2016, there are three questions, and in all the other years, like expert 2013 and 11, they're having frequently questions from river, right? So rivers, like studying rivers, like uh, now you should study that as a fact. Like you should study their tributaries and where they are originated and where they are moving and their effect. Okay, I'm not asking you to by heart the rivers, rather you can interlink it with so many other things: vegetation, climate, or the soil type, or even the hills. Right? So similarly, if you study the rivers, you can be assured that you will get at least one question from river for your prelims examination. Two marks from rivers, if you study the entire river and their tributaries. Uh, take the page number, sorry, take the 2016 prelims question. <coughs> question number two. Which of the following is or are tributary or tributaries of Brahmaputra? Similarly, like in 2015, fourth question. Consider the following rivers, which of the above are tributaries of Godavari. So if you study tributaries of rivers, you'll get, you can be assured that you'll get one question for your problems. Okay, so it's another, uh, means another important area which, which you should stress, give stress like while uh, studying the syllabus or studying the uh, such facts. <coughs> so th this is all about the type of questions and areas. Now, regarding the geography, like you should study certain kind of facts. I already told you, like river, it's a kind of like kind of fact you should always keep in mind. Similarly, you should study like uh, hills. How are they distributed? And you should have an uh, approximate idea about their height also. Like, are the Himalayas higher or the Western Ghats higher? Which of them is higher? Himalayas. Or within that, Himalayas like will be having selected ranges. Which of them is higher? So while studying this, you should keep that in mind. Again, I'll be discussing the which of the hills are important. Like the importance of hill, they, um, if you see the previous questions, in certain options, you'll be having certain names of hills. And frequently, they are always asking questions related with these hills. So that particular area is important for you. You should understand where that hill is originated and is it having any kind of like geographical importance or like any particular feature we can distinguish it with. Okay. So <coughs> map, regarding maps, like you should study the rivers as well as hills. And another thing is like soils. So these are kind of fact. See, we'll be having certain uh, five different kind of uh, soil and we should, they will be having different properties, right? So we should study which of the which kind of soil they are seen throughout the throughout our nation, like and like uh, what are the kind of vegetation found in these regions? Fine. A particular vegetation in a region will be dependent on climate as well as soil. So if you study the or the vegetation, it will be related with climate and soil. Right. So if you understood, if you understand the climate of a region, see in India, like which place are we having more rainfall? Kerala or Tamil Nadu? Kerala, right? So the vegetation seen over the Kerala will be different from Tamil Nadu. Because Tamil Nadu is mostly having dry climate, right? So the vegetation there you know, will be able to, will be drought resilient. 
or it will be able to survive in dry conditions. It will be different from the vegetation seen over the other regions or especially in Kerala, right? So similarly, like you can interlink climate, the soil or the hills and everything with vegetation as well as river. So these are the, the important facts which you should study and you will be frequently having questions related with these topics, either hill or river or vegetation or climatic types. Okay, again climatic types is another important area of uh, UPC, right? Not the climatic type of our states, rather the climatic type of the entire globe where we are having equatorial climate and what are its uh, characteristic features or what is what do you mean by monsoonal climate. See, monsoon is about to make onset. Am I true? Or it doesn't already happen. It already took place. It already made onset, right? Now, the monsoonal rainfall, are we having rainfall throughout the year? In which season are we having rainfall from monsoon? In summer or in winter? In summer season. See, we are having more temperature now, right? And the monsoonal rainfall happens in summer. So the rainfall is not distributed throughout the year. And we will be having seasonal rainfall associated with the monsoonal climate. Understood? So this is kind of a feature which distinguishes the monsoonal climate from all the other type of climate. So while studying the climatic types, you should give importance to give importance to such kind of details. And what is the important feature of say equatorial climate or Mediterranean climate? Fine. I'll show you an example. <coughs> 2014. Second question. Seasonal reversal of winds is a typical characteristic of. The answer will come out as monsoonal climate. Then the same as the ninth question. Question from hills. So while studying hills, you should be able to tackle this kind of questions. <coughs> Two thousand twelve or page number eleven. Two thousand twelve prelims questions, six question. Two thousand twelve page number eleven, six question. So the features of a state is being given there, right? And with that three statement, should be able to identify which state is being mentioned there, right? So like, answer I'm not discussing answer right now. So you can expect such kind of questions. And again, like in another year also, like we are having a similar kind of question. So some states which are frequently in news, there's a chance that you, they, you can expect questions related with such states. Like if a particular state is having more, you know, like more forest cover. So that's a characteristic feature with which we can distinguish that, that state. Or if it is uh, famous for production of any kind of crop, right? You can expect such kind of questions. So interlinking it with agriculture as well as like environment and geography. Fine. So the question from geography, like it will be interlinked both with like agriculture in some areas, like and in another case, it with environment. So you already saw the hills related question, right? Now, when you are solving question for your environment, you will be seeing more such questions. On one side, you will be given hills, and on other side, we will be given national park or biosphere reserve or anything. So they are interlinking the hills with the biosphere reserve. So again, the national park or biosphere reserve. You'll study it while discussing the or while studying the environment. And again, that's one thing you should keep in mind. So you can interlink the hills as well as the biosphere reserves and national parks, right? <coughs> so any doubt regarding your overall things, what we need to study and anything? Right. Now, how we can answer these questions or how we can answer a free, uh, future question? Now, if you see the topic-wise analysis, we'll understand that we should give more importance to physical geography and within that, climatology, right? So, while studying the climatology, climatology as well as oceanography, they are a bit interlinked. They are concept-related. There are not much facts you need to remember regarding climatology or oceanography. Okay, so you can interlink both climatology and oceanography and you should study it from the both prelims as well as your main perspective. Right? And while studying uh, geomorphology, like the questions from geomorphology, they are either like related with certain kind of facts, fine, kind of soil or hills or rivers. So while studying those areas, like you can study it with, they are not actually linked with climatology or oceanography. 
So if you study certain uh, facts and everything, you'll be able to the answer question from geomorphology. And similarly, like uh, here we won't be discussing Indian geography and world geography. We won't be discussing it separately. Rather than while I am taking world geography itself, like I'll be discussing Indian geography with that. For example, like say if I am discussing world climatic types. Before going into world climatic types, I'll discuss Indian monsoon and India's climate. Understood? So in geomorphology, like when we are discussing soil, what is soil erosion, soil conservation, or type of soil, there we'll discuss what are the different types of soils seen in India and what are their features and we'll solve the previous questions from that area. Right? So similar manner like uh, I won't be discussing the Indian geography separately, rather I'll be discussing it while taking the world geography itself. <coughs> Fine. Now in the classification if you see earth and universe, do you get any idea like what we mean by earth and universe? Like how the earth evolved or how the universe evolved and if you have been following news again, you will be seeing frequently news related with say some kind of planet or exoplanet or a kind of like new solar kind of uh, planet system and everything. So you can expect questions from such question, such areas. For example, <coughs> in 2015, consider fifth question. 2015, uh, fifth question. The term Goldilocks zone is often seen in the news, seen in the news in the context of. So that's related with search for our extraterrestrial uh, life. Extraterrestrial life means aliens, right? So exoplanet means like any planet or planet system ha outside our solar system, we call it as exoplanet. And this planet's like the probability of extraterrestrial life is more, right? Now, if you see the our solar system, life is there only in Earth. Now, Earth is not too much close to the sun, nor it's too far away from sun. It's an ideal position, right? So this zone, we call it as Goldilocks zone. Or this zone, we can call it as habitable zone. This is the region where the probability of life will be more over this region. So suppose, if you are looking for extraterrestrial life in some other uh, sun or some other star, the probability of life will be more in this Goldilocks zone, right? So the Goldilocks zone is associated with or is seen in the news in context of extraterrestrial, search for the extraterrestrial life. So again, if you have read that particular area in news, that question is simple. Okay. So after like hearing to one minute explanation, you will be able to get the answer. So if you have read that area in the news, you will be able to get the answer. It's not tough. They are not asking the, the, the mass of the new planet discovered or name of the new planet discovered. It will be some number. So you will be seeing the, those kind of things in news. See, you will be seeing see, this kind of star, PJ12356, is recently discovered. And it's a probable chance that it is having liquid water so that it can support life. So it can support life. Okay, if you are reading such an article, you don't need to remember the name of that star or that planet. That won't be asked unless it is very important. So suppose if you are finding a, our ninth planet and we are giving it a name, then that's important, right? Unlike that, like if you are frequently seeing this exoplanet or anything, you don't need to remember the name of that. They won't be asking such questions. Right? So regarding the Earth and the Universe, your preparation should be related with the Science and Tech page in, in newspapers. Like you'll be, you can expect some kind of questions from those Science and Tech related astronomy or new planets or exoplanet, extraterrestrial life, such kind of things from this Earth and Universe topic. Right? Now, oceanography, see the fourth one, oceanography. See the question distribution, 1, 2, 1, 1, 1, 1, and nil, right? Again, like we are not having more many questions from oceanography, the questions they are limited to either the currents, ocean currents, or the ocean tides, okay? See, first when I say like ocean currents, you will think like, now we need to by heart the entire ocean currents. See, we have already studied this in academics, right? Till 10th, we have already studied the ocean currents and the academic teacher will come and they will be teaching like, this is the position. Okay, it is moving from this place to particular this place. Okay, and everything will be needing to by heart. If you link the oceanography with climatology, 
you'll be able to easily remember these currents. And you don't, don't, don't need to buy hard the entire currents. And if you see them twice or thrice in your module related with if you're, if you're referring it to that, you'll easily remember it. And you just need to remember where they are located and whether they are cold current or warm current. And the question from this oceanography, in years beyond 2011, like I mean like 2010, 2009 and 8, the questions are a bit factual. In the sense they will be asking like, which is the deepest trench in Indian Ocean or in the Pacific Ocean. But now they are not asking any kind of such questions. Rather they are asking concept related questions. What are the factors influencing the ocean currents? Now you have already seen that question, right? In 2000, which was the year? Ocean currents question. 2012, 7th question. 2000, year 2012, 7th question, page number 11. Consider the following factors. Four factors are given there. Which of the above factors influence the ocean currents? Right? Now take the main questions page. 2015, first question. Take the first page, main questions, 2015, first question. Explain the factors responsible for the origin of ocean currents. Now, if you have seen the particular person preparing for that year, if they have seen the previous year question in 2011, they will be able to properly answer this question, right? So you can expect questions or areas which they have already asked questions, either for your prelims or mains, Again, you can expect previous question or you can expect future questions from that topic, right? So whenever you read a particular module, see, I will be discussing all these physical geography parts, geomorphology, earth and universe, climatology, and oceanography. And entire modules, they will be having sub-modules. Like in climatology, we will be discussing uh, things related with atmosphere, its layer, okay, and how the temperature is being distributed, how the pressure is being distributed, or atmospheric moisture. And we'll be discussing separate weather events, like tropical cyclones, extratropical cyclones, likewise. And each, in each submodule, I'll include, at the end of the page, we'll include like the previous day questions from that page, that particular topic. So when you're reading a module, how will you find out whether this area is important or not? You'd first see the last page and previous day questions. And if you're having recent year questions, I mean like from 2011 to 2016, right? especially that area or from which where they have asked question that particular area is really important in, in that module understood <coughs> and in our module like we'll be having questions not only from 11 to 16 i'll be including other questions like from to 1995 towards uh, till 2010 i'll be including questions i will not be including factual questions rather i'll be including the concept related questions right <coughs> so in brief like uh, in order to answer the previous year questions you don't need to search anywhere else. The answers will be in our module itself. And how this module is made, I'll be compiling the insight itself. See, the entire questions, you can answer these prelims questions from the knowledge provided in insight itself. See, if you read the insight is still 12th standard, or if you know the concepts which is being given in uh, till the 12th standard insight books, you'll be able to answer the questions which are being asked for your prelims as well as for your mains examination. Only very few selected topics like tropical cyclone or El Nino, which are frequently in current affairs, they ask questions outside the NCRT. Like if you see the NCRT in climatology, regarding the tropical cyclones, they are given it as like uh, two paragraphs. And you, we won't be able to answer the questions coming from that topic with that two paragraph. But for such areas, like I will be comparing the module from any uh, authentic site or like website or like any from authentic textbook or anything, right? So basically you don't need to read NCRTs. I will be compiling all the editions of NCRTs into our module. See, so suppose like uh, you'll be having new edition NCRTs as well as like we'll be having uh, old edition NCRTs. C certain questions, certain previous year questions, the answers of such questions will be there in old edition NCRT. Fine, but I cannot give the entire old edition or you won't be having time to read the entire old edition NCRT. So I'll take the important part from the old edition NCRT and I'll compile it with the new edition. See, the new edition will be having something extra than the old editions, right? Always. So I'll be compiling both of those things. So you don't need to read the three old edition NCRTs as well as like the new edition NCRTs. If you're having, see, I'm not asking you not to read the NCRTs at all. Like as an aspirant, you should always have an idea about the, uh, beat any NCRT, like uh, 
geography or anything okay but if you are having time other than after preparing like if you are having more time you can read the NCITs don't always stick with NCITs alone we'll be having previous questions as well as like the answer for those questions will be there in our module and will be compiled from either NCIT or from a, any authentic source right <coughs> and see why in class like I may not be discussing everything given in the module like I'll, our module will mostly be see less than 10 pages okay and I won't be discussing the entire things in the module so what I'm what I what I'll be doing is like I'll be discussing the favorite areas from where we are having question and I'll be discussing those areas thoroughly right and I'll be discussing like the important basic concept which will which will enable you to un understand those con areas and what I want is like after each session okay when you attend the next session should should have read, uh, read the previous module if you're coming to the class without reading the previous module I'm not strict in class, I won't check whether you are reading it or not, but you will be at the loss. The second class it will be continuation of the first class. Be very sure about this, especially in the case of climatology or, and oceanography. If you have missed the first class or if you have missed second or third class, from there onwards you will, get, you will not get the continuation. Right? Unless you attend the entire sessions, you will not get the overall idea of the climatology of ocean, or oceanography. Because in the first classes like we will be discussing uh, simple things like atmosphere, and how it's layered or what are the layers of atmosphere troposphere stratosphere mesosphere and what are their properties and we'll be discussing those things so don't smile at those topics we are having previous questions from 2011 or from the year 2011 to 2016 we are having previous questions from such areas right so <coughs> these basic kind of top areas like if you miss on them you won't be able to connect those areas like while we are discussing the weather event or anything or if we are discussing the climatic types you'll be able, you should be having an overall idea about how the temperature is being distributed how the how the wind pattern how they are distributed then you then only you will understand how how is the climatic type of a particular region right so if you are sitting in the climatic types class without sitting in the wind or like temperature distribution you will not understand anything right you you will have to simply mug up the what are the features of climate? You will have to mug up that. But if you have attend the, all the sessions, you will be able to interlink the entire concerns. This is in the case of climatology and oceanography. Because entire things, they are related. Right? If you are having a particular uh, wind movement, the ocean water movement will correlate with this wind movement. So if you, know, if you don't know from where the wind is moving, towards which direction wind is moving, you will not understand the ocean currents. You will have to buy heart the ocean currents. Understood? So my class, I'll be discussing, it'll be like my class plus module will be covering the entire topics, right? And if you're having any doubts after reading the module, you can ask in the next class. So you, I don't, uh, like, you don't need to interfere in the class, like you can ask after the class, like I'll be providing time after the class for your doubt clearance, right? <coughs> any doubts so far? Any doubts related with how you can, how you should study the fact or anything? See the facts which you, which you need to study, like I'll be pointing it out in, a, in my class. Like when I'm discussing like uh, the geomorphology. Suppose if I'm discussing the last module and we'll be discussing the map based, these hills and everything, we'll be discussing in those class, fine. What, like if I'm not specifying anything, like uh, in modules itself, like certain areas will be bolded. If you're reading a paragraph, in that, say, suppose six, state, six words or seven words will be bolded. It means that that's the core area you should remember regarding that particular concept, right? So now next regarding your preparation, how you can study these things. So so far I was explaining like how I will ex help you, right? I won't be able to help you entirely in the sense like these hills and everything. If I buy hard, buy hard it, will that be sufficient? You, you should study those things, right? So I'll specify what are the things you should study regarding these kind of fact. And other things we'll be discussing in detail related with its logic and everything so that you don't need to buy guts such concepts rather than you can understand those concepts, right? Fine. <coughs> Another thing, uh, see, if, see, if you're studying, if you're following our classes, I'll be providing module in e each class, right? And in that module, like I already said, like it will be under 10 pages. Fine. And when will, when will you be writing the prelims exam? In the next probably next 
June, right? And after that three months, you will be having mains exam also. So for both those exams, this module is important, right? But will you be able to revise this module before your prelims exam? See, suppose you are having one week or two week for your prelims exam. You need to revise the climatology or anything. Will you be able to revise with the module? No, it will be very much time loss. Uh, it, it won't be productive if you are revising it with the module. So what I need is, like when you are reading the module, may, keep a separate notebook for geography. When you read the module, see the previous year questions, whether if you are having a mains question from that topic or from that module, or if you are having a previous year prelims question from that topic, okay, make sure you write short note on that topic. Then only you will be able to revise the topic either for a test series or for your prelims or mains examination. So make sure you do this each time after the class. Each time after the class, you read the module, make short note on yourself, right? So that it will be easy for you to revise the topics. If you're not doing this, be very sure that after two months or three months, you'll forget these things entirely, right? So don't make that mistake, fine. Anything else? <coughs> Any doubts? So this is all for today, like in our next session onwards, like we'll be starting with the uh, to separate topics, right? Fine. Thank you.